All right, yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, the Nature Boy, back with another video for you guys here today. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today, I got a good video for for you guys, and today we are going to, going to be ranking the Yonko. So every Yonko that has ever appeared in the story, from weakest to strongest. So this will include seven Yonko. We'll include Buggy, Luffy, Blackbeard, Shanks, Whitebeard, Big Mom, and of course, Kaido. So maybe towards the end of this list, it might get controversial. It might get a little bit spicy for you guys, but let me know how you guys, how you guys feel. I know how I feel about it, and we're gonna get right into the list. So starting at number seven, we have, of course, Buggy the Clown. I think this goes without saying, Buggy has been very weak since the beginning of the series. He is kind of a running gag with where he keeps he keeps getting into positions that he has no business getting into. And quite frankly, he doesn't even want to get in these positions. He just kind of naturally finds himself landing these positions. And compared to the rest of the Yonko, I think Buggy is absolutely getting decimated by all of them. Everybody else on this list will one shot him. So this goes without saying. Some think maybe he'll be Pirate King 2 one day, who knows? He is Buggy D Clown after all. Moving on to number six. At number six, we have Blackbeard Marshall D Teach. Now, I think this will already be controversial. Some people may have him higher up on this list. However, for me personally, I feel like Blackbeard is still a ways to go before he reaches his peak. If you were to ask me where would he rank in his absolute peak on this list, I would say number two, right behind Luffy at his peak. However, I still think he has a ways to go. And from everything we've seen from him, he has been impressive, but even compared to Admirals, he has been impressive. But when you put him up against the other Yonko, the top, top, top guys of the, of the series, it's hard to put him anywhere else. Maybe you can make the discussion he's one tier above or not, but I think number, number five is six around that area. I have him at number six personally, but even with the last thing we saw of him with Rayleigh coming in, I feel like any other Yonko would be confident enough to take, take on Rayleigh and everyone else that was on that island that they wouldn't have to worry. So again, unimpressive feats from Blackbeard so far, but I do have faith in him as he has great portrayal in the story. He will get stronger as the series goes forward. And if he gets one more Delver Fruit, he's looking at top two on this list. But for now, he stays at number six. Moving on to number five. At number five, we have Charlotte Linlin, -Lin, AKA Big Mom. Now, this won't change for me because I would have had Blackbeard above Big Mom until not too long ago. However, realistically looking at it on paper, this is probably the physical strongest character in the history of One Piece. One of, if not the most durable, absolutely indestructible, natural freak monster. No one was born with the gifts that Big Mom was born with. And right from like a very young age, she was already seen to be to have the potential to reach Admiral level. People were already saying this about her as a kid. And even as a kid, she was able to defeat giants. She has phenomenal potential, phenomenal genes, phenomenal natural talent. And on paper, she has advanced Conqueror's Hockey. She has a fantastic Devil Fruit, one of the best Devil Fruits in the series. She has uh, amazing physical strength. She has great speed. She has amazing durability, amazing endurance. She's not lacking much. The only thing is, is when you bring her character into this, and when you bring her character, she tends to have a lot of moments where she just seems dumb or completely incompetent, and I feel like this puts her down. If Big Mom was really in her most pure state as a fighter, she would have wrecked Kid in Law in that 2v1, in my opinion. And to see her go down like that in the way she did, you can say that that was that was a plot device or whatever you want to call it. However, incompetence and stupidity, for lack of a better term, in my opinion, are part of power scaling. And because of that, I can't put her any higher. She at the end of the at the end of the day, that is part of her character, and you have to take that into account when ranking her as a fighter in the story. Because Luffy, we all know, for example, is pretty dumb himself at times. But when it comes to fighting, you can't say he's not always at his sharpest. So moving on to number four, at number four, we have Kaido, King of the Beasts. Yes, the one who is said to be the world's strongest creature. So 
I have nothing against Kaido. I think Kaido is absolutely great. He's absolutely amazing. He's one of the strongest characters of all time in One Piece, arguably top 10. However, I do feel like he gets overrated by the majority of the community. From what we've seen from him, you can definitely put him above Big Mom, definitely put him above Blackbeard. Physical strength, he's right up there with Big Mom, amazing. Indest indestructibility, same thing. Durability, he's probably slightly above Big Mom. And with him, it was even more so where his durability seemed like you couldn't get past it unless you had advanced hockey. Because as we saw, Luffy and Zoro were the only ones that were able to cause serious damage to him. And it was only after they were both able to unlock advanced armament and advanced conqueror's hockey. He is seen as the tip top in the world today. He is one of the strongest characters, probably the most feared Yonko. He has a great, great reputation. Probably, maybe the second most battle experience on this list. We will get to the other person soon. And he has been phenomenal. He has his, he has his advanced uh, observation with future sight he has advanced conquerors he has fantastic speed where he can blitz you with his thunder bagua his strength his double fruit where he can hold an island while he is fighting you turn into hybrid turn into dragon we saw with his final attack with the uh, flaming drum dragon how it's as hot as magma so he's very very versatile as well and he deserves to be at, at least number four on this list so number four we have Kaido and at number three we have the man who defeated Kaido, Joy Boy aka Monkey D. Luffy aka the protagonist of this series. Yes. Ever since that fight there has been a divide in the community where there's two sides. There's side A, Kaido would still beat Luffy, even a fresh gear 5 Luffy because he fought all these guys he fought all these people and he was already exhausted and side b which is the side that i am on gear 5 luffy has officially surpassed kaido and i say this because by the time they had that fight from the from the beginning of gear 5 if you were to refresh everything luffy had taken more damage in that one hit from kaido than kaido had taken from everybody else and i think a misconception here is that the damage that kaido took was was through a longer period of time where it was like a year a year and a half in the manga and so because it took up a lot of time in our subconsciously we think it was so much damage when in reality kaido was tanking most of these attacks and luffy's damage came in, in pretty much one chapter so we overlook it but in reality he died he literally died and he came back but did he come back fresh i don't think so we see him later exhausted as well. So the way I see it, a Gear 5 Luffy is superior to Kaido, and Gear 5 Luffy was able to beat Kaido. If they restarted now, Gear 5 Luffy would win. And we can even compare it side by side. That final clash, I think, shows us that Luffy's hockey had at least, his at least his army hockey, or his uh, Conqueror's hockey, had reached the point of Kaido's, if not surpassed it, since he was able to overcome him in that clash. If we look at Devil Fruits, I think it goes without saying the Hito Hito no Mi model Nika is superior to Kaido's Dragon Fruit. If we look at speed, I would give this to Luffy. If we look at endurance, this is where it's debatable. I would probably give this to Kaido. However, durability Kaido, strength, debatable. There's a lot of things here to, to put these two very, very close to each other. And I think these might be the two closest on this list. Right now, you can go either Kaido or Luffy, but personally, I'm gonna go Luffy because at the end of the day, they say the better man wins, and so the better man won. Moving on to the top two. Let me start off by saying that these are the two guys I would have always had on the top two of this list. However, very recently, I have felt like I might have had them in the wrong order, and I have switched the order in which I have these two. So getting into these two, we're gonna start with number two, and at number two, the second strongest Yonko of all time, in my humble opinion, is Edward Newgate, AKA Whitebeard. And let me just say this, I also believe he is the second strongest character in the history of One Piece. This man is phenomenal. Said to be the world's strongest man in Roger's era, said to be the world's strongest man in his own era absolutely lived up to that name in marine ford where he just took he went in there in the war of the best with the best the all-star game showed up and all eyes were on him he was already nerfed going in he got even more nerfed by his own subordinate and he went in and he showed them what's up best endurance feats we have ever seen by anybody in one piece 
even greater than Zoro in my opinion. Amazing strength, amazing willpower, amazing hockey. Probably the best Devil Fruit or one of, if not, in my opinion, top two best Devil Fruits in the series, only behind Laws, but better in terms of combat. We saw him go up against the Admirals. We saw him go up against Akainu, and in my opinion, beat Akainu and send him down and completely go on. Go on to fight the Blackbeard Pirates. Beat the Blackbeard Pirates with two holes in his chest and half a face. We see the respect he gets from Sengoku. We see the respect he gets from Garp. We see Roger more excited to fight him than anybody he's ever fought before. When Roger sees Whitebeard coming, he looks like a kid in a candy store where he knows he is gonna get his equal today and he's gonna get the strongest fighter he can possibly get. Whitebeard is the peak of strength. He is the ep epitome of strength and no one represents this more in the series than Whitebeard himself. However, there is one man that I believe is stronger than him. The only man that I think has ever surpassed Whitebeard in the story, and he also happens to be a Yonko. He also happens to be Luffy's idol and the reason Luffy set out to see. And of course, I am talking about Red Hair Shanks. Yes, so I believe Red Hair Shanks, strongly believe that he is the strongest character of all time in One Piece. And the reason I believe this is because as the series goes further and further on, and the less and the less we see of him, although he's an extremely important character and he was introduced in chapter one, we're seeing Kaido introduced a lot. We're seeing everything of Kaido in the story, from his introduction to his fall, everything from Big Mom, everything from Whitebeard, everything from all these characters, and we haven't seen anything else yet from Shanks. One thing that has been synonymous with Shanks since the very beginning of the stories is the term hockey. He introduced it, he introduced a lot of different forms of hockey and I think he has the best hockey in the series of all time and the later on we go in the series the more and the more it seems like hockey is the end all be all and the most most important aspect of combat and because of this you can only you can't help but to turn to Shanks and see how everything is in his favor right now all the cards seem to be lined up perfectly for him to be the strongest Hockey, need, we're gonna need to see more forms of hockey that Luffy has to overcome. Who's gonna show us that? It's gotta be Shanks. He was the protege of Roger. We know each generation surpasses the one before, as most likely Luffy will surpass Shanks and Roger. Roger probably, Shanks probably surpassed Roger. He is Luffy's idol. He is still being saved. He comes in and he freezes and paralyzes a Navy Admiral without even touching his sword. The hype behind him, although he has no feats, the hype, the endless hype and the endless portrayal that Oda bestows upon this man is undeniable. And I think if you are denying it, you are only denying yourself of the greatness of Shanks. If you disagree, that's okay. Maybe you don't think he is the strongest, he's stronger than Whitebeard. However, there is no arguing that when we see Shanks, we're gonna see greater forms of hockey like we have never imagined before. Forms that Kaido does not have that Big Mom does not have, that Mihawk does not have, that probably Roger and Whitebeard don't have since they are gone. They are dead and gone in this series and we're gonna need to see this and Shanks will be the one to show this to us. So at number one, I have Akagamino Shanks, the idol of Luffy. And that's gonna be the list for today, guys. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. I already know a lot of you are gonna disagree. Look, I can be disagreeable with. Comment down below your your own list what's your top seven or top six because we all know buggy is seven and if you enjoyed the video please leave a like subscribe if you're new share the video help my channel grow i'm trying to reach 150 subscribers that's the new goal as soon as i can get there and also comment down below what other type of videos you would like to see as i'm always taking suggestions for new videos and thank you guys for watching and be sure to check out for a new video coming out later this week and have a good week guys and stay safe